Hi everybody. This is actually Thursday. It is in the afternoon and it's tea time. I'm videoing a day early and trying something new. Um, some days the internet here has been down for an hour or two and I wanted to be sure to have videos ready for you to view on Fridays. Um, so I'm videoing a day early and then sending the videos to you on Friday. This is my way of planning for those little internet blips. <laughs> so I hope you had a good week. So happy that you're here with me today on April 12th when this video is going up. I'm Kathy. Welcome to Yarn with Heart. And um, thank you so much, everyone, for watching, liking, subscribing, and sharing. So happy that you're all here. Um, this week's video will be about a blanket for the month. It's an update on the Flowers Granny Square Blanket. Also, information about a hospital in Ontario that accepts donations for children's blankets and a lovely YouTuber who is coordinating the collection of these blankets um, about a gift for the week. Uh, Ravelry Projects, a suggestion by Judy from Judy's Creations in Crochet and progress on how many projects I have entered into Ravelry during March. And a demonstration um, about how I join yarn using the magic knot and an explanation about keeping track of the rows that I'm on as far as learning to use a knitting row counter. So next week will be about a Mary Maxim yarn opening and another small purchase, one that I made from Etsy about a, a knit blanket that I've been working on and also updates on how the half hour a day of knitting is going. And there will be another gift for the week next week as well. I've got some uh, progress made on next week's gift for the week. So if you subscribe and ring the notification bell, you won't miss that next video coming up. I look forward to seeing you then on April 19th. So the first item, let's talk about um, the flower blanket. Now this these are granny squares. People who've been here and watching a few of my videos know that this is actually a coaster pattern, a cup of sunshine crochet flower coaster. I'm turning these into a blanket. It's by Gabriella Rose, free on the website or a paid version on Ravelry. And um, I've been using Mary Maxim yarn and a six millimeter hook. Now, I have quite a few of these squares done. I only have a few ends to weave in. And after laying out the squares, I discovered that I do have a couple of squares more to make. As once I put these out, um, I found out that I made a couple that were in the wrong color combination so I have to redo a few but here we go this is how many I have made I will move to the side so I can put a picture up in the corner here of the squares laid out and I'm still trying to decide what color to join with now, these are the colors that I have. This one, mm -hmm. let's see if I can, it's more like that color. It's sort of a, a deep rose color, a green, a 
um, there's lots of the white. I have a second ball of the white. And then this um, rose, a medium rose. And the brown. I have another ball of the brown as well. So either any of these would work. So I will put a picture up on the screen one more time as large as I can. So that will help with the color selection. And I'm wondering if you could put an idea in the comments if you have a suggestion about what color I should use to join. Um, I'm unsure about with this one about what I should do. So that's that blanket and it's well on its way to being completed. So there we go. Now the second blanket, this one is really pretty in the colors that came, this came in um, a Cambridge Fibers Advent box. It was um, called Finger Paint, Brunette Softy Baby Stripes. And such a pretty striped pattern. I like that I don't have to tie in the colors. I'm not color controlling it. I'm just letting them flow along as the yarn ball uh, goes. And this one, I've used this pattern before. It's um, the Crochet Fruity Stripes Baby Blanket by Tiffany and Hannah at uh, DC Farm Crafts. It's a free pattern on yarn inspirations. And I'm using a five millimeter hook. There. I'm making this one to be 36 inches wide. I did modify the pattern slightly to make it wider. And I think a baby's gonna love these nice, uh, vibrant colors. Now, this one is, the reason I started this blanket, there's a lady called Shannon. She's from Art Junkie Crochet and Mixed Media Arts. She does crochet, card making, mixed media, and art journaling. Um, we were in a live chat at the same time, and that was a couple of weeks ago. After that, I subscribed to her channel, and I've been watching her video vlogs, and I found out she's one of the organizers of a blanket drive, collecting blankets for children and teens, and she brings the blankets to an Ontario hospital, CHEO, which is the Children's Hospital of Eastern Ontario, Ottawa, Canada, and the blankets can be sewn crocheted, knitted, or quilted. Also, loveys are collected, and these are all for children aged 3 to 18. They're, these are children receiving treatment in the hospital. And details about the size and other requirements for those items are in the description box of Shannon's videos. Another option is to share the information about the blanket project on your channel, if you have one, to spread the word about the program. I would like to donate one or two blankets and maybe some yarn for this cause, and I will link Shannon's channel below so you can contact her if you would like. So this is um, something that I'm working on for uh, the the children at that hospital. Now the other item that I'm working on, this is for my gift cupboard and this is the gift for the week. It's called Richard Cup Cozy. It's by Helen from Sunflower Cottage Crochet. There's a free pattern on her website and also there's a paid pattern on Ravelry. I used a five millimeter hook and I used Brunette Handicrafter in the color Crown Jewels. There, 
This is how it looks when it's caked up. So this, I really enjoyed working on this one. And from what I understand, it will fit um, a variety of different cup sizes. This one is just a cup that I had from Tim Hortons, but it also will fit uh, Starbucks cups, the tall ones, as well as the um, shorter cups that you can get from there. So I'm, I know someone who uh, likes Starbucks, and I know another family member who likes Tim Hortons, and I thought if I just uh, wash a couple of their plastic cups after we've used them, I can put a gift card inside and this little kind of um, cup cozy on the outside of it, and it makes a nice little gift and a nice presentation for a gift card. Just a different idea. Instead of a gift card sleeve, would be to put the gift card inside of a cup like that. Now, the other thing I thought I would talk about today is about Ravelry projects. And a few weeks ago, Judy from Judy's Creations in Crochet had uh, mentioned about how much of a difference that it makes to designers after completing a project, if one can add that information on Ravelry. And that was on my list of things to do, yet still wasn't as mo I wasn't as motivated as I should have been to do it. And then a lovely YouTube friend asked me if she and I could be friends on Ravelry. That was when I realized I looked and I hadn't posted any Ravelry projects since August 2023. <laughs> oh dear. So between those two ladies that got me in gear and March this year was a busy month, I actually was able to put 22 of my completed projects onto Ravelry. There are still more to go and I will see how many I can do this coming month. I'm very grateful to both these ladies for getting me started at this. And it is nice to know that my project posts might do a little something to help others, both those thinking about making a project and the designer. So if you would like to include your projects on Ravelry, um, I encourage you to try. It's not difficult to do. And some people who post projects put a lot of detail. Some people just put a little bit of detail. And all of that is, it's all good. So whatever way you like to use that part of Ravelry is wonderful. So the last part, the last thing that I thought I would talk about today is about demonstrations or, um, it, yeah, I would call it demonstrations. I have attached a demonstration. It'll be in the last two minutes of this video of how I join using the magic knot. So if you are interested to see that, uh, you're welcome to watch this video till the end. A viewer asked if I could try demonstrating how to use a knitting row counter. It is really difficult for me to disappoint people and I wish that I could have done that demonstration. And although I have tried my best, I need more practice at using size uh, 3.5 or 4 millimeter needles with a knitting row counter. I was not able to figure out that technique yet. <laughs> um, I need more practice. Uh, please do search YouTube as there are videos about it out there. And I noticed on those videos that there are quite a few different ways to use knitting row counters and certainly that it does just take practice. It's a great tool 
and we will each find a technique that works. So I encourage you to try and keep trying. So to everyone, thank you so much for joining me. Have a wonderful weekend. Enjoy your crochet. Enjoy your knitting. And I hope to see you next Friday. Hi, I'm trying to do a video here to show how I do the uh, magic knot. It's a little bit um, unconventional, maybe a little different than some people do. And I thought I would try and demonstrate um, please keep the comments kind because I've never done a demonstration on video before and I'm just trying to do this one as my first ever demonstration. So what I do is I take about a four inch piece of uh, extra yarn and then this second piece of yarn I think of it as my road and I put this across the road then I go back again to make a loop and then I go through the tunnel and I pull it so that there is still extra yarn on this side. Now that one, the loop was going toward the bottom. Now this yarn on the left, I do the same thing. I go across the road. I make a loop. And then I go underneath and up and through that tunnel. And so to make sure that these knots were made properly, I always give it a really good tug to make sure that they're both going to hold well. A lot of people will tie, um, tie these and then snip off these extra pieces of yarn I keep these extra pieces of yarn on here and to make sure that my uh, finished object is extra secure, I weave these two ends in. Now in this case, I use two colors for demonstration. Usually this is the same color of yarn because you are joining um, a new yarn ball and it is the same yarn that you're just adding to your project with. It's not an easy type of join to do if you're trying to join in a specific place. So if you are trying to do color work, this is not the join to use. This only will work if you can vary by a stitch or two where the actual join will happen. So thank you for watching. Thank you for being patient with my demonstration. As I said, I'm not really experienced at doing this type of demonstration and I hope that you will find something here helpful. Have a great day.